Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Video you'll see only on Local 4 showing an assistant principal getting rough with a high school freshman. And the student says what happened next led to a broken jaw. Good to have you with us tonight at 11. That teenager claims he only wanted to get back into the school to grab his wallet. But he says an assistant principal and school resource officer went too far to keep him from entering. And now the district is facing a civil lawsuit. Yeah, Jermont Terry first broke the story uh, this week. He's now live from DPS headquarters with the new video. Jermont. Devin, DPS Community District plans to open an investigation into what this new video reveals. But the boy and his mother believe that the video that you're about to see proves that the teenager was roughed up and manhandled for no good reason. This scuffle at Westside Academy is the core of a civil lawsuit involving Elijah Wynn. The teen left the DPS Community District High School this day with a broken jaw. Like I couldn't chew nothing. What played out on school surveillance left Elijah drinking liquids from a straw only for six weeks. For what force did this man use to hurt him like that? Back in October 2017, you can see Elijah as he tried walking back into the school 40 minutes after dismissal. But he's met off camera by an administrator. It's like you can't come in, you can't come in. I'm just trying to receive, tell him I'm trying to get my wallet. Elijah admits he was persistent, but he didn't expect this to follow. That's the assistant principal forcing him out of the building. Elijah's pushed through two sets of doors before he slammed to the ground. He tripped me and his knee just instantly going in my chest. And while this tussle gets his mother emotional. This grown man threw my baby. And that's why I said he's kicking his leg. That's why I asked him, could you breathe? He has asthma. The body slam is not what left Elijah injured. I was injured after he walked, after he walked in the building. That's when you see a school resource officer come out. And once outside, the cop is accused of throwing a punch to Elijah's face with such force, breaking his jaw. He stuck it out and just went like that. The outside camera did not capture that portion of the alleged assault. But attorney John Marco says the inside camera did. But those seconds are deleted. 18, 18 19, and then it goes to 31. And the 10 most relevant seconds of the video is missing. Marco believes DPS Community District needs better training and a full overhaul. They need to provide a safe environment for these students. I think that they need to clean up. I think in order to do that, they need to get serious about these systemic problems. There's not much that this little 120 pound little boy could do. Why my son? Why? Now, Elijah's mom immediately pulled him out of Westside Academy, and she has since removed him from the entire district. We've been trying to get DPS to respond to this case all week, and it wasn't until we provided them a copy of their own video that they offered this response tonight. The district has not been served with a lawsuit regarding the issue, so we are unaware of the specifics regarding the claim. We will investigate the matter at the time and determine our position and response. The video in question question relates to a student who was not authorized to enter the school and was repeatedly asked to leave by several school leaders. Now we should point out this lawsuit that the district hasn't received was filed last Friday. Reporting live, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Yeah, Jermont, a couple things. It really surprises me that this is just now coming to light. You said this happened in October of 2017. And secondly, the response there yes. says this student wasn't authorized to enter the building. But you can see on the video clearly that it looks like two other students go in before him. You're exactly right, Kimberly. Let's show you that video again. You can see Elijah. He's the last one to enter the building. Yeah. There are two other students that he didn't know. They go right in before him. It's unclear why this assistant principal targeted Elijah. I'm not sure if they, he saw the other two. But again, this was only 40 minutes after classes ended. So the question is, why was he so aggressive with Elijah? Yeah. All right, Jermont, certainly more to come. Well, relief from the heat is finally on the way. Yeah, storm threat also fizzling as we get closer to Friday. Hey, Ben. Yeah, I don't know if this was a, a national nightmare, but it was long and it is over. After seven straight days in the 90s, this was the worst of it. 96 is what we hit for a high this afternoon. That tied the record for July 5th that was set back in 1996. It was the hottest of the seven-day stretch, and it is also the hottest of 2018 so far. 
Good riddance uh, to you and your heat and your humidity because we're going to get rid of that tonight too. Still a couple sprinkles on Fort Live radar, but most of those storms have passed and I can't wait to go to bed tonight so I can get up and enjoy this in the morning. 65 low humidity, 75 and a little bit of a north breeze, all with plenty of sunshine and with no humidity tomorrow. We'll get to enjoy that for several days. We'll look at how long that lasts, plus the returning heat all in the seven day forecast coming up. Guys. Okay, Ben. Now to breaking news from Northwest Detroit, where a man has died after being shot in his car. Detroit police say the man was driving on Greenfield near Margarita when a black SUV pulled up and someone fired several shots, hitting the man multiple times. The victim's vehicle eventually came to a stop when it crashed into a wall at a nearby gas station. Police have not made any arrests. A driver on Van Dyke ended up airborne and went right into the backyard of a Sterling Heights home, taking out the pool, the pool slide, and a shed in the backyard. Driver is okay. Is okay. Uh, the backyard, not so much. Mara McDonald live in Sterling Heights where it happened. Mara. Devin, imagine you have been at work since around 730 in the morning. You're hot. You're tired. You just want to go home. Put your feet up. Sit in the air conditioning for a minute. You've picked up a pizza on the way home. That's exactly what Amanda Young did. Drives into the driveway, only to be confronted with this. You can clearly see the trajectory the SUV took off the Van Dyke Expressway and right into Amanda Young and her boyfriend's backyard. What should this mess actually look like? A nice backyard with a shed and a nice pool sitting back there for the kids to go swimming in. And now... I have a tornado in my backyard. You can see the remnants of the pool spread like ribbons throughout the backyard. The shed, well, that's a little harder to ID. It's just a metal flap at this point. Because the car went airborne all the way over here. The car ended up in there. How he missed the tree, I don't know. When Amanda pulled into the driveway with a pizza, she could not believe what she was seeing. He was in there. There was a guy that saw it happen, talking to him. The guy walked away. I said, does somebody call the cops? He's like, yeah, I did. I walked over to ask the guy. I said, what, what's going on? He goes, I fell asleep. And then he tried to turn his car on. I said, you're turning your car on? I said, you need to turn your car off. I said, we smell gas over here. I can't have you turning your car on. So he turned it off. Sterling Heights police were there minutes later and took the driver to be checked out. They say he's okay, but to add insult to injury? The guy takes his keys with them. So when they try to tow it out, now I have holes in my yard because they couldn't turn the wheel or nothing because he has the keys in his pocket. Back here live, the backyard may be a total mess, but the one benefit to all this, the kids were not in the pool when all this went down. We're live in Sterling Heights tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara. Tonight we're hearing from the mother of two teenage children who were hit and killed on July 4th. Justin and Alyssa Hahn were walking in a Bedford Township neighborhood when a truck left the road and hit them. The 13 and 16 year olds later died at the hospital. The Monroe County Sheriff's Office tells us a 49 year old was behind the wheel. He gave no explanation how his truck ended up off the road. The children's mother says she realized what happened when she saw an ambulance down the street. And I ran out, and there was a lady praying at the end of my driveway. And I asked her what was going on, and she said, I'm praying. And I go, I look down, and I go, I think those are my children. A local veterans organization is raising money to help fund the children's funerals. Investigators don't believe distracted driving, speed, or alcohol were factors in that crash. Heavy police presence tonight in southwest Detroit, where police make a surprise discovery. A task force was serving a drug warrant when police found a grenade in the house. Now, it turns out it was not functional and there were no injuries, but if you saw the activity, that was the reason for the fuss. Thieves are targeting the parking lot of a veteran's chapter house, and the chapter's president wants to know why. It's happening at the parking lot of the Vietnam Veterans of America post on Woodward and Temple. Somebody is stealing small trees used to decorate the lot. President says four trees and a fence have been taken, and he wants to know why it's happening. I, I don't know. Um, if they are hungry, we'll feed them. They need clothing, we'll give them clothing. So I don't know what the reason is that why they're doing this. The chapter house has been there for 40 years, and money made from the parking lot goes to help veterans in need. Construction for the Gordie Howe International Bridge is expected to begin soon. The Windsor Detroit Bridge Authority released these new renderings and a projected timeline for completion of the bridge. They say it will be the longest cable stayed bridge 
in North America. They expect it will have a 125 year lifespan with bike lanes on the Detroit side. Work is already underway at the Canadian Point of Entries. Project expected to be complete sometime in 2020. And the drawings make it look like Slick, iconic. yeah.